What's going on guys? Today we're coming at you with a miniature painting video and uh, specifically Warhammer figurines and um, here we have one that's already finished and this is the result that we're going for. We're just going to be hand painting with some really cheap materials just um, this is a video of what you need to kind of get started um, to do it this way. This is the no airbrush way um, I haven't done the base on this one yet. This is just painting the miniature itself uh, without the base on this video. So the miniature in question we're going to be painting today is this guy. He's a space marine from the combat patrol. And um, we're going to try to go for this look, that this look right here. So basically, um, we're going to hit it with a base coat of uh, blue and we're going to um, go over all the other different colors and then do our highlights. But basically, here's all the colors over here that we're going to be using today. We're using Game Color uh, brand uh, by Vallejo and we're using a wash by Reaper paints. So I've used three different miniature paints uh, that I really like that are really high in pigment. There's Vallejo paints, there's Reaper paints, and then there's Citadel. And Citadel is the most popular. Um, they're, they have a little bit uh, more fancy options um, and they're a little more expensive. They're, they go for about four uh, 50 a pot. Um, I'm going to be using these brushes over here today. We got kind of uh, medium sized and it goes down to really small here for smaller details. These are just Chinese kind of off brand uh, brushes that I bought on Amazon. And we've got our uh, water transfer. Um, emblems over here to put on after it's done and then we've got our matte medium uh, acrylic this is see-through matte paint to put over top of your emblems to keep them from being flaked off or scratched off so we're gonna get started and um, I'll just go through the simple steps of what I do how I get these kind of results uh, just by hand painting the miniatures this is the no airbrush method but this is a way to just if you're just getting into the hobby you don't have to have a compressor you don't have to have an airbrush you just need a few cheap brushes a few colors of paint and um, of course the glue here to put your miniatures together I use this stuff right here uh, Tamiya extra thin cement there's a ton of it in here. You won't be replacing this uh, anytime soon. If you buy one of this size, this is uh, doesn't really say the ounces here, but it's it's a good amount of uh, cement. So this will last you a long time if you seal it up and uh, take good care of it. Um, so let's get started with putting on a base coat here of. Uh, funnily enough, it's called uh, Ultramarine Blue. That's going to be our base coat. So we're just going to go over the entire miniature with some Ultramarine Blue. Okay, just a real quick touch on what Warhammer is as a hobby. A lot of people look at it differently, um, start the hobby for different reasons. My reason is 90% painting miniatures and displaying miniatures and collecting miniatures. I love that aspect of the hobby, but Warhammer in itself is a war game. Uh, it's a miniature heavy war game based around miniatures uh, in which you go against opponents' um, armies with your own army. And um, that's just broadly speaking um, what it is. Um, it's pretty rule heavy, pretty in depth. Um, there's a lot of uh, fluff, as they say, with the Warhammer universe, a lot of lore and background stories about each individual army, um, a lot of um, 
cool background behind each and every army that you choose. I just simply started with Space Marines because I talked to several people that were in the hobby, looked up loads of videos and research, and everybody was like, well, you can get started pretty simply into Space Marines, and you know, if you like the hobby, you can move into other things. So I, I got the Combat Patrol here, and I got the um, Primaris uh, Invictor Tactical War Suit over there because I thought it looked pretty cool. Um, but anyways, um, there's a lot of miniatures and a lot of very cool designs and very cool armies to collect for, and that was right up my alley. So that's why I got into the hobby. Um, I may very well not play the game for quite some time. Um, I have a lot of miniatures to paint, but I'm just trying to, um, in this video, trying to show that they can be painted by hand very cheaply and you don't have to have um, any kind of, uh, you know, expensive equipment or anything to do it, which it's a pretty expensive hobby for what it is. It's uh, plastic miniatures that come in sheets. You pop the pieces out and you build the miniatures and then you get something like this. And then, um, you know, you use the glue to attach every little piece until you have a complete miniature. And then you paint it. Um, you don't have to go by any color scheme. You can choose a completely different color scheme. You can make up your army, what colors you want your army to be. I'm just sticking with the chapter, you know, and the, the true color of the Space Marines, the blue here. Um, now, in the hobby, um, each army has its own codex, and that's what this is. It's a rule book for the army that you have. Um, they have different rules, different parameters, the whole nine yards, and also the codexes are filled with lore, background stories, that kind of thing. So that's just kind of touching on the hobby. It goes much deeper. There's much more to say about it, but this is just a miniature painting video simply showing that you can get results like this simply by hand painting. I mean, uh, it's certainly not winning any awards, but it is plenty good enough uh, to put on the table and play with or to display. This was my first attempt at painting a Space Marine, and this is what I came up with. So this is just coming from a uh, new person going in the hobby. But as I was saying, it's a pretty expensive hobby. And uh, if you're going to go ahead and buy a bunch of these and build your army, uh, you might as well buy uh, an airbrush um, and a little compressor. They, they go for pretty cheap online. You can find them all over the place. But for the price of several of these, several of these boxes of miniatures you can get an airbrush and it makes this process a lot faster but for the purposes of this video I'm not using an airbrush I'm just using hand brushes okay so we're gonna cover them in uh, ultramarine blue and uh, you don't have to use a lot of this paint it comes out of a little dripper here for this style and I'm just simply going to put a couple of drips down. Also, always be sure, which I did it off camera, but always be sure with um, high pigment paint that you shake every time before you use it. You shake it up really well. <clears throat> so I'm just going to saturate my brush a little bit. And I like to put a little bit of water with the paint so that it just covers more smoothly and it's not so chunky and thick. So everywhere that is going to be blue, I'm going to go ahead and base coat blue. And even some parts that aren't going to be, I'm just going to use it as a base coat. But big areas like the gun that I know is not going to be blue, I'm going to leave gray. So we're just going to go through here and try not to miss any spots. 
reload your brush whenever you need to and it doesn't matter if you get paint on the base because you're gonna cover that up later with some uh, grit and paint or texturing however you want to do that part but this uh, game color from Vallejo it really does a great job covering as you can see it's uh, very inexpensive it comes in a set on Amazon Alright guys, so after our blue base coat, here's what we're left with. Just covered all the areas that are mostly blue. And then we're going to let this dry and we'll go on to the next step of uh, different colors. Okay, now we're going to come in and do the other colors. We're going to do the silver, the gunmetal, for the gun, the antennas, and metal parts on the body itself, like the grenade here, and other little parts that we think need to be silver. And uh, the eyes are red. I like to make the eyes larger than what they actually are. That way they stand out more. So, um, Instead of just the lens, I paint a little bit around the eye lens to make their eyes look a little larger. Um, so we'll do the gunmetal silver next and then some brown for around on the belt. This little tassel here is like supposed to be a red stamp with these little uh, papers hanging down. It's kind of like you know, a um, like a recognition award thing that's on these Space Marines. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but it's on a lot of them. And uh, the, it's like a red wax stamp looking thing with uh, like two pieces of white uh, ribbon hanging down. So we'll start with the gunmetal gray here. a little bit of a finer brush. We'll mix some water in here to make it a little thinner and then we'll hit the gun with it and this gives it a nice metallic flare. It has um, like metallic flakes in the paint it uh, helps it look uh, a lot like metal. Now when you're doing these secondary colors you want to be careful not to spill any over onto the blue you did because that's just going to mean you have to go back over it with more blue to cover it back up. You want to be careful and keep your paint kind of thin 
because if you make it too thick it can obscure some of the details on your miniatures so I like to water mine down a bit so that it's not too thick and it doesn't fill in details Okay, that's most of the silver. Now we'll move on to some red and brown. This is uh, bloody red. And I'm using a very fine brush. We're gonna go in and do the eyes. I'm gonna water the paint down a bit here. And if it doesn't do it bright enough for you, you can go in with a second coat. And if you get it on the scowl of the helmet or the mouth or any other parts around it, you can go back with some blue to fix that later. I'm going to mix a little bit of blue in with this red to get a more uh, burgundy color. And I'm going to go in here and uh, paint this little seal. And if your paint is wet and watered down, it will look like it's going to fill in the details, but as it dries, it will sink back down and your details will come back out. So let's paint one of these grenades on his hip. Red. that might be all of our red parts so the only part we're going to be using green on by the way you guys might have saw that I had goblin green over here um, is the sight of the gun I'm gonna make the sights green and um, so let's switch over to some brown and get some uh, holsters um, painted up here and the handle to that pistol sticking out and um, we may be on to our next step after that. Okay, we're going to use leather brown for the uh, holster and any leather pieces. Now, you may be thinking this looks kind of plain and nothing looks very shaded and it's kind of flat looking but we are going to be using a wash at the end of this that's going to darken everything down a bit and give it some contrast kind of shadows here and there I'm going to get this leg strap here as well that straps the holster to his leg And any mistakes you make will have to be corrected just by going back over it with the base color blue. 
if you accidentally touch over. Okay, we're using polished gold. We're going around the shoulder piece here and we're hitting a part of the skull and crossbones on his chest that's barely visible right there. Now see in this case I made it too thin and it kind of spilled over so we'll have to go back and fix that. So certain paint if you thin it down it runs more than other colors especially with like gold flake paint it uh, sometimes reacts differently. So this paint you don't really want to mix with a lot of water it becomes runnier than other colors. And gold, usually when it's going on to a dark background, it needs more than one coat to stand out. But we'll fix it when we go through with our highlights um, after the washes. Okay, so we'll have to go back and straighten up those lines with some blue after that dries. Let's get the top of that skull down here. Okay. We got a little bit on the gun. We can go back and fix that though. Okay, so more or less, those are our colors. Let me go ahead and get some of this goblin green and we'll do the scopes. When you're using these paints you, you you can use a ridiculously small amount for little things like scopes or little dots that you're gonna need here and there so you don't waste your paint you can use like very very small amounts Okay, so we'll let all that dry and we'll come back with a wash to darken things up and we'll do our highlights and some repairs. Okay guys, so I have went back and corrected a few spots. Um, I went around this gold with some blue paint, straightened that up a bit, and I added the green to the rear side of the gun here. Um, a couple of parts we missed. I uh, missed a part of the golden skull and crossbones on the chest piece. I got that straightened up down there. And uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and do these little uh, tassels that are hanging off of this recognition kind of badge thing here. And uh, with some white. 
Now I would do this in kind of like a cream color, but I'm going to give this a wash with some brown afterward. So I'm not too concerned um, with it sticking out too much being blonding white or anything because it's going to have a uh, wash on it. Okay, so we're going to let all these little repairs and stuff dry and then we're going to go over it um, with a wash and then we'll do our highlights and our water transfers. Okay, so I forgot a couple of spots here. Um, right here, he's got some grenades on his chest. I'm going to paint one of them red um, and one of them silver. I'm going to try to snake around and reach that. Uh, traditionally, when you do this, uh, you're supposed to paint the chest piece before you attach the arms. It makes it much easier, but this guy was already assembled. Um, like I said, I'm still learning myself. This is just kind of learn with me type thing. And uh, I have done a lot of miniature painting and model painting, but just now starting to dabble into Warhammer. Also, um, these bends areas um, where the crotch is and where the arms are, there's this like rubber material that allows them to bend their arms and it's supposed to be black going by the work, artwork on the box. Um, so I'm going to go over those and paint those black as well. So let's go ahead and get the grenade on his chest, get some red going on in there carefully here. My brush was a little too wet. Another trick, um, you can dry your brush off and then soak the paint off of it. And just keep doing that if you made a boo-boo. Okay, I think I like that. And uh, I'll probably wait for that to dry before I go back with the silver on the end pieces. But while that's drying, I can go ahead and get the bends of the arms that are showing, uh, get those colored black. And I actually overlooked that on the uh, sample model that I did. Um, I did not paint the bends black, I just left it all blue which the wash did a good job of gathering in the crevices and making it look shaded anyway. But I'm going to see how it looks if I just paint the bins and stuff black. Um, see how that goes. It might end up hiding um, too many details because when you paint something black it kind of loses all definition sometimes. So we'll see which method looks better after this is said and done. Okay, so right here is some of that rubberized material that's showing. And right here. Okay, and we'll get it underneath here. The best way I can explain the method I like to use with this stuff is I uh, like get my brush wet but not too wet with paint. And then I put a, like a little driplet down and then I just basically move it around until it covers the area that I'm working with.
Also, there's an area here where the abs are that is the same kind of material. So I'm going to try to sneak in there and get that colored too. Okay, as far as I can see, other than this uh, silver up here to be applied to that grenade on his chest, um, that is all the different colors that I'm going to add to this miniature. So we're going to let this completely dry, and then we're going to come back with uh, some of this brown wash on the leather parts, and we're going to try some black wash on the rest of the body and uh, see how that looks. Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and do our washes. So first we're going to do the brown wash on the leather parts. So we're just going to go over these parts here with a little bit of the wash. And the um, point behind a wash is that it shades and it uh, goes into the crevices which leaves dark spots and light spots where it needs it And go ahead and get these tassels here too. So you can see how it gives them that tea stained look. So we'll let that dry a minute and then we'll hit the whole figure with some uh, black wash and uh, see how that looks. Okay, so now we're going to go over it with some black wash and have something nearby that you can soak this back off with. Um, if you don't, if you're not comfortable using your brush, you can just kind of dab it with a little piece of toilet paper to remove any that you put on uh, too heavily. So we'll start with his head here and just kind of run it around the crevices. You can see how it just kind of dulls things down and starts running into the um, dips and crevices and uh, giving it a good shade. Also, the gun, um, you can see that after all of that uh, gloopy looking paint dried, it's much more defined. After the paint dries, it kind of, uh, you know, the majority of the um, fluid dries out of the paint, and uh, you can see your uh, details better after it dries. You can see it makes a pretty massive difference in making the details pop, especially on the gun there, where there's not a lot of big. Uh, flat area with a bunch of little details you can definitely see where this stuff shines so 
So we're going to stay away from the areas that we already um, washed with the brown wash and just get the areas that we haven't gotten yet. So there it is with the wash applied, so we're going to wait for that to dry. Okay, so for highlighting, I'm mixing up a lighter color of blue to go on the blue parts. And we're going to highlight the gun with some white parts. And it's going to look kind of blindingly bright uh, right off the bat when we do it, but we can tone it down again with some more wash after we're done if we don't like it to be that bright. So just kind of imagine when you're looking at an object and where the light naturally hits it is where you want to highlight it to make things pop. So like on the tops of things and the edges I'm also going back over some areas with the original blue that got a little too dark for my taste. That way we have some contrast here. And I'll uh, go over it with the wash to make it blend in better. Okay, so we're going to do our white highlights on the gun. Be very careful with the white because it's easily overdone. Okay, so that's about it on that. Now we're going to let this dry and then uh, hit it with some washes to dull it back down a touch. And we should be uh, pretty much done with this one. Okay, second round of wash on the select places we want it over the highlights and such. So as you can see, it makes it a lot less blinding and in your face and more subtle, which is kind of what we wanted.
Okay, so we're going to let that dry and then we should be ready for our water transfers. Let me not forget about the gun here though. That white needs to come down a, a little bit. Okay, so we're going to do our water transfer. So I have a little tiny uh, medicine cup here of water. And I'm just going to put these in. And uh, you can manipulate it with your brush here. And you just want to wait a minute until they uh, separate from the paper. And once they separate, they should just slide off of the paper, but it takes a couple seconds. It just slides off. It sometimes it's a little tricky. And then you take it and you put it where you want it on the figure. You just kind of move it into where you want it after you get it unfolded and try to position it in the center of the pauldron. Right there and then you just kind of push down and then just kind of let it dry and then you can go over it with some of the matte medium to hold it in place a little better. Okay, let's let that one dry and as it dries you can kind of smooth it out so it doesn't have those wrinkles as bad. Okay, we're going to take some of this stuff right here to seal our water transfers so that it doesn't flake off or get damaged. And here they are before we seal them. I got all the wrinkles out I could. They're not perfect, but I tried to kind of smash them on there with my brush. Um, and uh, keep from ripping them the best I could. So now we're going to seal them in place. I'm going to get a little bit of this on my brush here. Just go right over it. And paint the whole pauldron so that it all blends in good. When it dries, it won't be milky looking. It will just seal it in place. Okay, and then let's do this one. A little more on our brush here. Okay, now let's let that dry and it'll be done. Okay guys, so this is the final product minus the base. This is just uh, 
after hand brushing and uh, applying the washes and the highlights and then the water transfers. So guys, that was my tutorial of how to paint a Warhammer Mini. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll catch you next time.